Hello, and welcome to the show. Today we are talking about Boötes' Void, also known as the Great Void, which is way easier to say. This is a massive area in space that is just basically empty, which is why it's called a void. Okay, so what is so special about this void? When we look into space, it's, it's easy to feel like it's an endless blanket of stars, and with those stars are planets and entire galaxies. So many that our brains can't even really comprehend the number. To find it, you just need to look at the Boötes constellation and then fly out for around 700 million light years. However, in the Great Void, there are just a handful of galaxies, a handful in the scale of the universe anyway. Discovered by astronomer Robert Kirshner in 1981, this Great Void is a spherical shape that is roughly 250 million light years in diameter. If you look at the observable universe, this void is taking up 0.27% of it, which may not sound like much, but it means this is the largest known void. And right now, the likes on this video feel a bit like a void, so how about a little help? Shortly after discovering this empty ball of space, astronomers found eight lonely galaxies. How sad. But eventually, they spotted a total of 60. Hey, it's not so empty. 60 is a lot of galaxies. Yeah, sure, it's a lot when measuring things with our small human brains, but for the universe, this is almost an unnoticeable amount. Here's a famous quote everyone is always sure to bring up when talking about this great void, from astronomer Greg Aldering. The scale of the void is such that if the Milky Way had been in the center of the void, we wouldn't have known there were other galaxies until the 1960s. But what the heck does that even mean? Without more knowledge of space and our understanding of it over time, that quote is kind of pointless or useless. So let me help. In the 17th century, a French astronomer, Charles Messier, compiled a list of objects he had found in the universe, and although he wasn't aware that what he found contained galaxies, he was technically the first to spot and name them. He called them spiral nebulae. Then. Flash forward to 1923, Edwin Hubble did a little measuring of those spiral nebulae, and in 1929 published his findings. One particular nebula was actually the Andromeda Galaxy. So rewind to that quote. We wouldn't have known there were other galaxies until the 1960s, instead of the 1920s? Or did he mean the 17th century? I don't know. One doesn't seem as wild as the other, but our technology advanced greatly from the 20s to the 60s, so... Mm. If we compare the size of this void, a diameter of 250 million light years, to the rest of space, then it shouldn't only have 60 galaxies, but rather 10,000 galaxies. And it gets even weirder. Those galaxies aren't shaped like ours and all the other ones we see, like this and this. They are tubular, like this. And I hope I found an image of one. One theory for this unique void is that it is an accumulation of many smaller voids that just started connecting, often compared to a bunch of soap bubbles where they attach and form one large bubble. And maybe that's true. It would help explain the unique situation. The really fun science fiction style theory is that there is a level three civilization that has been expanding its reach and eating up stars and planets. This is all based around the Dyson Sphere concept, which I will have talked about in another episode, and that either came out before or after this one. Uh, check the description for a link. This massive ball of empty space is just another reminder of how small our place is in the universe, how small our troubles really are in the grand scale of the universe. Though it may sometimes be mistaken for Barnard 68, it's actually very different. Barnard 68 is a nebula that's doing some pretty tricky things to our view of space. And that's a topic for another episode, which if I did these right, would be available right to here, right here. If it's not, then there, I screwed up something. <laughs> so just watch whatever I'm pointing at. And as always, thanks for watching. And what did you learn today? <laughs>